Welcome learners. Today we are going to talk about the great Himalaya. As you know, Himalaya occupies the northern part of India, not only India, but also it extends towards the west and merges with Alps. Himalay means him means snow, alay means residence. In other words, Himalaya means abode of snows. Normally, we associate Himalaya with many mythological stories and abode of gods. Let us have a view of the Himalaya from northwest. We start with Indo Gangetic Plain, the Outer Himalaya, Middle Himalaya, Great Himalaya, then Brahmaputra Valley, Tibet, Kimlun Mountains. Himalaya physiographically extends from Pamir Knot moving towards Indian side. We have Pakistan, Punjab Himalaya, we have Kashmir Himalaya, followed by Himachal Himalaya, Uttarakhand Himalaya, Nepal Himalaya, Sikkim Himalaya, Northeast Syntaxial Bend consisting of Himalaya. Now, I had mentioned various physiographic divisions of Himalaya. This has got nothing to do with the geological classification of Himalaya. Let me clear one thing. If you refer to older literature, we find Himalaya being mentioned as Himalayas. That means there are number of Himalaya mountains. Let us move to the next part. Here we are viewing the entire Indian peninsula or what generally is called as Indian subcontinent. This gives the physiographic divisions of India. The blue colors indicate the western gods and the eastern gods. The central green color indicates the Deccan plateau, the consisting of basalts, dolerites and gabbro. The pink color indicates the Thar Desert, which is shared not only by India, but also our neighbor Pakistan. The yellow color indicates indo gangetic alluvium and extreme east you have got again yellow color that is Brahmaputra system. You see on top represents Himalaya. You will see number of black lines in that. The black lines indicate different ranges of Himalaya. For example, we can say Karakoram range, Zanskar range, Dauladhar range and so on and so forth. If you see in the east, you will find the yellow color is surrounded like a U bend. That bend is called as syntaxial bend. Till now, you saw the two dimensional view of India. Let me take you over into the space. Now, here this is the imagery. At the bottom, you see greenish color. That greenish color is the Indo Gangetic alluvium, as I said. Then you are seeing a semicircular arc. This semicircular arc is the entire Himalaya. If you see in the west, you got a small bend that is syntaxial bend in the west. Similarly, when we see the east side, you will find another bend that is syntaxial bend in the east that is the northeastern Himalaya. Above you see a brown patch that is the Tibet plateau beyond which you have China as well as Mongolia. This photograph shows various divisions of Himalaya. In the south, you have got Indo Gangetic Plain. Then you have a small patch of striped lines. Where the Indo Gangetic Alluvium meets these patched lines, 
that is where the Indian plate is subducting under the Himalaya and that we call as main frontal thrust. Moving further north, you will see MBT written that is main boundary fault. Between main frontal thrust and main boundary fault, we have the outer Himalaya, in other words, the Shivalik formations. Shivalik formations are freshwater deposits and you find immediately after the Indo-Gangetic alluvium. The central white part beyond MBT towards north is known as the Lesser Himalaya. Mostly the Lesser Himalayan formation are sedimentary in nature. This is a panoramic view of the Lesser Himalaya south of Bogeshwar district in Uttarakhand uh, state. In the background you see snow clad mountains, in the middle you have the green color mountains which are partly forested, partly deserted and in the forefront you have got the magnesite containing mountains. Further towards the north if you see there is MCT that is main central thrust. Beyond main central thrust we have the crystallines. When we say crystallines we mean igneous rocks as well as metamorphic rocks. Beyond the central crystallines again you have got a thrust line. Now these thrust line indicate Indo Sangpo Suture zone that means where India and Brahmaputra line meet that is a thrust zone beyond which you have got the ophelite melange. Ophelite melange is exotic mixture of various types of rocks. Beyond that we go to Tibet and China. Now various colors indicate as I said we have the indo gangetic alluvium, outer Himalaya, then lesser Himalaya, main central thrust followed by indo sangpo Sucha zone. Let me tell you that Sangpo is the Chinese name for our Brahmaputra river. If you have followed this, let us move down to next slide. Now in this map, you will see in the south Uttar Pradesh, in the west Himachal Pradesh, in the east Nepal, in the north Tibet. Uttar Pradesh and all which are in white, they indicate Indo-Gangetic alluvium. Indo-Gangetic alluvium is thrust into the outer Himalaya by main frontal thrust as I said earlier. Main frontal thrust is followed as we move up by outer Himalaya. Outer Himalaya consists of Shivalik sediments. Shivalik sediments are huge and they belong to Eocene onwards up to Pliocene. Then the Shivalik sediments are thrust under Lesser Himalaya. The thrusting takes place along main boundary fault. If you see the center of the map, you will see a lens like structure which is supposed to be the Masuri syncline. Beyond Masuri syncline, the Lesser Himalaya continue. Let us talk something about the rock types in Lesser Himalaya and also in Shivalik. First we take up Shivalik. In Shivalik, we have coarse to fine grained sandstones intercalated with clay bands. The Lesser Himalaya consists of Jutok group and Kroll formations. In Jutok group, at the bottom we have Chandpur phyllites followed by Nakhtar quartzites followed by infra Krolls above which Kroll formations are found. Beyond that 
pearl formation. The entire Uttarakhand consists of this crawl formations. Crawl formations from bottom to top is divided into A, B, C, D and E horizons. Crawl C is supposed to be the purest limestone in the entire section. Beyond lesser Himalaya, you have main central thrust because the sedimentaries are now coming in contact with crystallines. By crystallines, I mean granites, granitoids towards Badrinath. If we go to Badrinath, you can see the Badrinath granites. Beyond that, you see the red color above the pink color. The red color's lower boundary indicates the Indo Sangpo suture zone, that means that is again a thrust fault. When we say thrust fault, normally a student thinks that the thrust is over a small area. In case of Himalaya, all these thrusts that is main frontal thrust, main boundary fault, then main central thrust, all these thrusts extend from west to east. At different places, they are called by different names. For example, Lesser Himalaya, if we go to Himachal Pradesh, we call it as Nahan thrust. If you come to Uttarakhand, we call it as Kroll thrust. Further in Kroll thrust, we have got North Almoda thrust, South Almoda thrust, depending on the location. So, one should not confuse these thrusts with other thrusts. I said after main central crystallines, we have Indo Sangpo Sucha zone beyond which we get ophelite melange. Ophelite melange is an exotic mixture of igneous sedimentary and metamorphic rocks. After that, we come to Tibet and China. This shows the drainage pattern in the Himalaya. The major part in the central part you see the Indo-Gangetic alluvium drainage which you see they are basically of Yamuna river in the left and Ganga river in the right. Moving towards east, as we come towards Bengal, the Indo-Gangetic alluvium or Indo-Gangetic drainage pattern ends. In the east, you see another drainage pattern that is the drainage pattern generated by Brahmaputra river. Now, this map clearly shows the meaning of Indo-Gangetic alluvium. If you see in the west, you have got the Indus system. In the middle, you have got the Indo-Gangetic drainage pattern. And in the east, you have got the Brahmaputra system. This is one of the holy place in the Himalaya, that is Dev Prayag. Prayag means where two rivers meet. The Alaknanda river coming from north to south and the muddy color river Bhagirathi, which is coming from the east, is meeting at the center to form the holy Ganga. Till now, you must have learnt about the physiography, geomorphology, drainage divisions, and general geology about Himalaya. It has been a fascinating study till now. Thank you.